Today we're going to be reviewing this 48 volt 100 amp hour server rock battery. This is a battery made by a company called Pup VWMHB. Kind of a weird name, but the battery looks pretty interesting and also has some very interesting features. So it's a 51.2 volt 100 amp hour battery made for 48 volt solar power systems. It is a 3U server rack style battery. So 3U is kind of a standardized design and shape that they're using in the server rack battery industry. So if you have a 3U style rack, this battery would work with that rack. That is a 100 amp BMS. So we can do 100 amps continuous out. Output. They rated at 8,000 discharge and charge cycles. They say they use grade A cells. What's interesting about this is the BMS is Bluetooth, which is pretty common, but it's also Wi-Fi. And apparently with the Wi-Fi feature in the BMS, you can actually remotely monitor this battery. So you can maybe use a login or maybe an app and you'll be able to remotely get into the battery's BMS and see exactly what's going on with the battery. So that's a pretty cool feature that I definitely want to test out. It also has communication. So this thing can communicate with other batteries as well. So if you want to add multiple of these batteries together in a server rack, these will all be able to communicate with each other and it is also compatible with many different inverters on the market so you can set this up to communicate with your inverter as well it does have a pretty good list of supported inverters it has a built-in fire suppressor so that's pretty cool and we normally don't see that in these budget server rack batteries that's normally only a feature you see in the really high-end battery got a nice built-in lcd screen it weighs 100 pounds so it's pretty heavy you can connect up to 15 of these in parallel and as far as the price normally these go for about 950 bucks but on amazon right now if you use the coupon that's available on amazon it'll immediately take it down to $769. So at $769, it's a really good value, or at least we're going to find out in this video. Also in the box, you do get a nice set of leads. You get your parallel cable. So if you want to parallel these with other server rack batteries or other of this style server rack battery, and you also get these different type of mounts. I know these for a fact are going to be the little side plates that go right here, but I'm going to have to look to see what these do, but I'm pretty sure this allows you to stack the batteries without having to use a server rack. And some of the pictures I saw on Amazon, it looks like if you attach it like that, you don't even need a server rack. You can just use the battery case itself almost as a server rack. And then you can just use these little feet to stack it. I only have one of these batteries, so I'm not really gonna be able to show that, but I'm barely certain that's what these are for. So that's pretty cool if that's really how that works. And the leads also seem really long. It's gonna make it really easy to connect this to any system that you have. And then you also do get your instructions. That's gonna talk about your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi setup. This talks about communication. It's your warranty card, and it does say it provides a five-year warranty. Quick start manual. And if you skim through this, it just has some very basic information. I would recommend you skim through it. Just make sure it kind of helps you get everything going so that's pretty cool also talks more about the dip switch settings some of the bms screens and then the actual user manual for the battery itself now taking a better look at the front of the battery we have these nice amphenol connectors which i do like these on one hand because it makes it very easy to make your connections you literally grab your connector and it literally snaps right on. You can't really mess that up. The only bad thing about these is when you go to build your own cables, you have to buy these connectors and they're not the cheapest thing in the world, but I actually haven't looked to see how much these cost. That might be a con to some people. However, a lot of the batteries are now starting to come with these. It's becoming pretty standard. Got these nice little caps. You have your main switch right here, so that's gonna turn on the BMS itself. You have a 125 amp breaker. You have dip switches for your communication, a dry contact, some LED indicator lights for state of charge. These are gonna be all your communication ports and they're even labeled inverter. PC and battery, positive terminals, negative terminals, and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and turn it on. So I'm gonna kick the BMS on. And you have four different options. You have pack info, pack status, pack para, and pack set. Shows your voltage, your current, capacity. Shows your state of charge, your remaining amp hours. FCC, it says 105.2. So I wonder if that's maybe the actual capacity of the battery. We're definitely gonna test that when we do our capacity test. And it has a cycle counter. It has four temp sensors. It tells you all the temperatures going on in the battery. Cell info, we're gonna click that. Gives you individual cell. So if you have an issue with a cell, you'd very easily be able to see that. That's really it. So there is a lot going on in the screen you definitely can look at a lot of information here's what the side of the unit looks like you get a good little data label right there giving you some more information and specs so the side right here you just have a warning label very nice solid carrying handles that's definitely a must for these heavy server rack batteries so i'm going to go ahead and get the battery fully charged then we're going to get over to our hand cart with our sun gold power inverter we're going to set communications up i'm going to show you guys how to do all that verify it works and then we're gonna do a capacity test on the battery. All right, I did go ahead and download the JBD BMS app on my phone. It does require an account, but there's also a guest mode. I'm assuming if you wanna remotely control this thing via Wi-Fi, you're probably gonna to have to set up an account and log in in order to do that. But there is a guest mode where you can just go in, connect it straight to Bluetooth and have no issues looking at all the parameters of the battery. There's kind of what the app looks like, gives you all the basic information. You get cell voltages, temp sensors, and that's pretty 
pretty much it. There's not a whole lot of, actually let's go to pack data. You can actually go in here as well and change the protocol for your inverter type. So when we go to connect this to my inverter, we're definitely gonna do that, but I do like to see that you can adjust it in the app. It's a little bit easier than having to use all the buttons on the screen. You can see all the individual cells, highest voltage, lowest voltage. So that's really nice for, in my opinion, to be able to see if you have any issues going on with the pack. So definitely a lot of good information there. And I was able to actually connect to this BMS with other BMS apps. There's quite a few out there. If you wanna actually make changes to the BMS, you can actually do that with other apps as well. Let's try the Overkill Solar app. When you are trying to connect to your battery, there's your MAC address. So as long as you can find this MAC address in your app. And there we go. Now we're actually in the Overkill Solar app. So you got a lot of good information as well. And you can actually go in here to Toolbox, Settings, and you can actually go in here and change some of these and write it to the BMS. So that's really cool. So that means this thing has a really good programmable BMS. All right, so I went ahead and connected our Sun Gold Power Inverter to the battery because that's what we're gonna use to capacity test and load test the battery. It's real easy. You go into the BMS screen into the settings and you select SRNE. Sun Gold Power Inverters or SRNE Inverters. And if you're curious about what inverters are supported, here's a little list right here, and it's gonna tell you, you either have to use CAN protocol or RS-485. Some of these can use both, but if you look here, SRNE, we're gonna use RS-485. Pretty easy, we go into Pack Set, Enter, RS-485, Enter, and then we're gonna pick SRNE. There we go, now that's set. Now I'm gonna go in the inverter, make sure this is set to RS-485. And I believe it's item 33, and we're gonna change that to, we had to set the inverter to WOW protocol. Make sure it's on RS-485 for your communication protocol. Make sure this is on RS-485, and make sure you select SRNE, which is preset in the BMS. Now the communications are working. As you guys can see, we're actually displaying our state of charge, which is in fact 25%, because we still have to charge the battery. And now that the communication is working like it's supposed to, all you gotta do is go into your inverter, and you can sit there and change what parameters you want the inverter to shut down at. So I believe it's set right now to 15%. I'm gonna set that all the way to zero. That way it can fully discharge the battery as low as I can get it for a discharge test. All that's gonna be settable in your inverter, which may change depending on the type of inverter that you're running. So make sure you read through your manual of your inverter to set that up properly. All right, our battery is fully charged. We're ready to do our capacity test. We're gonna run the test at a 0.2C load. So we're gonna see 20 amps on the DC side. We're gonna use this 18 amp charger in order to push power into our 48 volt solar power system. So none of the power is gonna get wasted. We have our amp hours right here zeroed out. We're fully charged 100%. I set it to 100 amp hours as our 100% target. Total is gonna be what it actually pulls. And there we go, about 20 amps. So that's about a perfect 0.2C load. It's gonna take about five hours to complete the test. And once it's done, we'll see the results. It's a good thing too, because my 48 volt system is pretty low on battery. We've had a lot of shade these last couple of days. We just finished the discharge test on the battery and we ended up getting 100.05 amp hours. So exactly 100 amp hours on the dot. What I did notice is the BMS's settings were very conservatively set because the BMS actually shut down one other time before I got to this number and I just restarted it and I kept the discharge test going. And when I checked the cell voltages in the BMS, they were only down to about 2.8 to 2.7 volts. So there is a good thing that there's some buffer built into it, but we still were able to get 100 amp hours out of the battery. That's amazing. The battery performed falsely the whole time. So there we go, 100.05 amp hours, and we still have 42 volts. We're not even down to 40 volts yet. 40 volts would be considered your lowest limit that you'd wanna go. That would be 2.5 volts per cell. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the battery apart and take a good look at the inside and try to see what kind of cells and BMS that they're using, as well as look at how the build quality is laid out on the inside. <laughs> First thing we notice, a big piece of protective plastic. So we are gonna go ahead and remove this as well so we can get a better look on the inside. So here we are with all the covers removed. We have our 16 cells laid out right here really nicely. We got big beefy bars that kind of help compress everything. And I will say the metal they're using is looks pretty beefy. It doesn't look like it's flimsy at all. Your balance harnesses are nicely zip tied along the edges right here. The balance wires are also bolted to the bus bars. They're not soldered or nothing like that. And they also put a little bit of glue on them after they secured them on there. We have the hump style bars for expansion. These are laser welded. All the cells have foam in between the cells themselves, as well as all around the case, there's foam. So everywhere a battery edge touches, there's insulation, there's foam, and there's also some of that fiberglass sheeting between them all as well. So a lot of insulation there. That's really good to see. We have a temp sensor here, here, here and here. So we have four temp sensors on the battery and there's more than likely some built into the BMS itself to monitor the temperature of that. Here's our nice large beefy BMS. It has a nice heat sink on there. I'm gonna get the model number here in a minute and I'll zoom in so y'all can see that. Here's our, what appears to be a Wi-Fi antenna that's kind of zip tied up over here. There's also a little module. There's a fire extinguishing device down there as well. We have nice, looks like six gauge wiring coming from the battery to the BMS with bolted terminals. And then we have another set of leads coming out of the BMS. Also two thick wires to our main terminals. Everything looks nice and bolted. We have one thick, looks like a four gauge wire for the positive side, and that goes directly to our breaker. And then that goes to the main positive of the cell, which is right here. And it just kind of travels underneath this. It is also all insulated. This also is insulated. Anywhere it touches metal, they put this extra insulation 
sheathing on it. And there's no loose wires. They look like they zip tied up everything really nicely. Our balance wires all look good. They put a little bit of adhesion goo on the connector so they can't come loose. So there's a good close up of that. It all looks really good, honestly. For a battery that we've never really heard of before, that, that I've really never heard of, there's your BMS. All the information on it there if you guys want to look more into the, who makes that. I'm assuming it's a JBD, but only because the app is a JBD. Could be wrong though. And the wire management looks pretty decent. It is all zip tied up and secure. I don't see anything flopping around in there. There's a better look at our fire suppression module. So it does in fact have that. And it is around the BMS, which is more than likely if you're ever gonna have a failure would be around here anyways. The batteries aren't gonna catch fire because lithium iron phosphate doesn't burn. See our main switch right here. That's our main on off button, our terminal. For a no name battery, it appears to be very well built. All right, it's very difficult to read, but I did find a QR code on the cells. The cells say 100 amp hours, 3.2 volts. And then it has a series of numbers. So I punched them into a QR decoder and this is what it came up with. So it says they're a manufacturer called Cornex. They're relatively fresh cells, 30th of August of this year. So that's pretty good. Here's a website, but it's probably all gonna be in Chinese. But anyways, that's what I came up with for cells. And there we go, just like that. I now have this battery fully in service with the rest of my batteries. So we have some golf cart batteries. We have some normal batteries down there. Some more server rack batteries there. Some more server rack batteries there and a homemade cow pack and they're all working nicely together to power my house guys that's going to wrap up testing of this battery for now it did really good in all the testing that we did do and the build quality appears to be pretty good in my opinion for the price if you can get this thing on sale for that 769 dollars range i think you're doing pretty good honestly this build quality seems to be on par with about some of the other budget server rack batteries that we've been testing really i'm happy to see that especially from kind of a weird brand that we've never heard of before sometimes Battery manufacturers will make up a weird fly-by-night brand and sell a bunch of junk to people, but this doesn't seem to be that. This thing actually seems to be pretty good. And in the future, I'm gonna end up building me a server rack and putting a bunch of different server rack batteries in parallel just to show you guys that you can absolutely 100% do that because I do get a lot of questions about how I connect these batteries to the rest of my system. And honestly, I just put them in the system connect them up, make sure the voltages are relatively close and I never have any issues. But that's going to wrap it up. If you guys are using this battery, please let me know in the comments the type of luck you guys are having. And if you're having any issues with the battery, also, I would like to know about that as well. And I would also like to know your overall thoughts on this battery. 40 volt server rack battery market is amazing right now. There's tons of different options, more options than ever. And I'm sure we're going to continue to see cheaper and cheaper prices. And hopefully the build quality stays at least at what this thing is, if not, maybe even better in the future. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.